What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to another episode on the PC Fun YouTube channel. Today, I am meeting up with Brad. We're going to the Wisconsin River to catch some post-spawn walleyes. We're gonna share with you some of the best secrets and some of the techniques to catch these fish. These fish usually group up heavy, but sometimes post-spawn, they can be hard to find. Check it out. It's actually kind of crazy, guys. You know, I like doing these videos that are informational because, you know, a bike can be on fire in a certain place, but if you don't know the little nuances or the certain baits or the certain techniques, a lot of times you won't catch fish in that area and you'll wonder why. So hopefully this video will help you understand a bit more on how to catch these post-spawn walleyes. Well guys, we just got down here to the Wisconsin River. Uh, we're fishing near the Nakusa area, probably about close to five o'clock. So uh, see Brad's over here with me, a few other folks down here fishing. And basically what we're doing is we're chasing post-spawn walleyes. And there's a, there's a few different ways to do it. And so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna kind of show you how we're targeting these fish with multiple different techniques to be successful. All right guys, so when you're going out for post-spawn walleyes, there's a bunch of different techniques that you can use to catch these fish. Now the difference between pre-spawn and post-spawn walleyes is these fish are beat up, they're tattered, they've been spawning for the last three weeks, and sometimes you need to have a little bit more of a finesse presentation to catch them. So one of the great baits to use is a Rapala Husky Jerk. So there's a lot of different colors, uh, fire tiger, gold, orange, blue, chrome, a lot of great colors out there, but this is typically the size you wanna go with during this time, because again, those fish are a little bit more lethargic after getting beat up for that whole spawn. Now what we like to do with this is typically just cast out and it's as easy as pie. Just a super slow reel. You're gonna feel that lure making bottom contact and that's exactly what you want. That's when those fish are gonna pick up that bait off bottom and then it's game on. So like I said guys, when you're reeling this in, it's just a nice, slow and steady retrieve. And it really depends you know, on the depth, the cover, and what you're fishing. But the ideal thing is to cover as much water as possible. So you wanna really bomb that bait out there and then you've got current, obviously, so you wanna kinda of just keep up with that bait, keep it tight, and again, you're gonna feel that bottom. And sometimes you have to adjust your speed depending on what the fish want, but you don't wanna to reel too hard because you are fishing a river, and there's a good chance you'll get snagged up. So you wanna kinda of creep it along the bottom and feel everything. All right, guys, so here's another approach to walleye fishing post spawners, and Brad's gonna kinda of explain what he's doing and, and how he's doing it. So the part of the river that we're fishing here in Wisconsin, this is kind of a popular setup here, you just get, common little weights and it depends on how fast your current is and how high your water is if your water's low and you just put you know I only got three on there right now and then the key is the floater jig the floater jigs will keep it off the bottom from wherever your weight is to there so we're fishing in probably two to four feet of water today so I want this probably popping up about a foot and that's just gonna have that natural little swaying motion like that. Plus the minnow is gonna be tried to squirm around too. It's gonna look like, you know, a wounded minnow and those fish will just target that more than just having it just sitting out there with like a regular, you know, jig or whatever, a 16 ounce jig, so. And I noticed you tail hook that minnow. Is that just to kind of give it that natural action as it's trying to swim off the to, bottom? To go up river, yep. Got it, okay, yep. makes sense. Same natural thing that they would do. They're gonna be going off the river and following that current coming into the shoreline here, so. Okay, and he's just using a little rod holder, guys. There's a lot of different rod holders on the market, but just, I mean, you can even use a stick with a wire in it if you really Absolutely. want old school. There's some over here. Yeah, right here. yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, there you go. go. <laughs> We're yeah. talking about that, there you go. So you can really just use anything for a rod holder, and you're just trying to have that tip up so that you can see that it starts to bend or bounce when that fish grabs a hold of that minnow. There it is. So guys, when we got here, there was actually people kind of all up and down this spot here, uh, about seven or eight people, and they've kind of since dissipated. So what Brad has done here now is kind of just claim some real estate and spread out our options a little bit. So we got another minnow rod right here. Um, and again, like I said, it's about covering water. The more options you have out there, uh, the better odds you have of catching some of these post spawn walleyes. All right, so we're gonna be showing you a few options here. Some of my favorites for post spawn walleyes on the river and we're fishing today on uh, the Wisconsin River and just a few options and colors that are my go-to and are most people's go-to, especially on a river like this. It's not too stained, but it's stained enough where you can vary your colors and jigs. So one of the, the top options here and my colors that I absolutely love are the chartreuse paddle tails. Now that chartreuse is good because one, it's high vis. So, you know, right. a lot of times what happens in the springtime is we get a lot of rain. So that creates runoff, which creates dirty water. 
So that chartreuse and that paddle tail are great because one, it provides thump and it also provides a high visibility for the fish in that stained water. And then your other option here is your old ribbon tail. And again, that same chartreuse color. Oops, sorry. But unlike the paddle tail, this ribbon tail, <clears throat> you can fish faster. And it's probably more my go-to for post-spawn walleye, especially on the river, than the paddle tail. Just because I can do a lot more with this. I can bounce it off the rocks, I can bounce it off the sand, and I can feel it just a little bit better because that the paddle tail, you got to work a little bit slower. But unlike this one this one you can really give her yeah and that ribbon tail too like you said you know sometimes these post spawn walleyes it's a subtle bite sometimes you know a lot of people think they're feeding up like crazy because they just spawned but when you have cold fronts in the spring uh it's just like anything else those fish become lethargic so sometimes that ribbon tail provides a little bit less action in the water than that yep. thumper tail and that's going to give you some more bites here in the spring a lot of the core colors too i've seen more and more people lately um going to the core colors um awesome you want that core color to be a little bit darker than the you know the surrounding areas of the plastic gives you that good contrast yeah and it has it has that really awesome feature under the water <clears throat> and then this one not a lot of people like going dark like this on the river i do i love it especially if you can contrast that and have the two-tone colors especially with that chartreuse that chartreuse should be a staple in anyone's walleye fishing especially on the river <clears throat> that color is just automatic and then the other one is uh orange i mean as you can see in my my jigs here it's pretty much chartreuse and orange so when i'm throwing this out and i'll tell you what i got on here i have just a regular 16 ounce jig and then with that ribbon tail and what i love doing especially in the area that we're in here it's it's not extremely like swift going down the river and stuff and we're actually in a little break here so all i do i toss it out i go a little bit to left so that way when i work it i'm working more of an area and i'm coming back and i'm actually letting it just nonchalantly bounce off the bottom so you're kind of just using that current to your advantage yep. really and then i just do two or three twitches and that way it's going to give that wounded bait look like that and now the 16 ounce jig i have on actually allows me to have more presentation in the water when it's actually swinging down with the current and all you do is let that bounce and just give it two three little twitches and all you're really trying to do guys when he's doing this is basically you're using that current to your advantage and you're also basically trying to keep it up off the bottom so yep. Uh, your your weight on your jig you could be using a 16th ounce you could be using a quarter or an eighth it really just depends on how much current you have flowing with that river and that's that's where river fishing really differs from fishing in a lake you know in a lake you may have some wind current but in a river you know you got a lot of snags a lot of rocks a lot of sticks and if you're not using that right jig size you could be breaking off a lot more than you're fishing oh yeah you can see in the trees <laughs> yeah. yeah there's baits all over the place and you go up in the trees oh yeah that's what happens so understanding you know what brad just said is definitely critical to making sure you're catching fish instead of catching logs all day long we all do don't worry <laughs> well guys today's just one of those days we came out with the intention of catching some post spawn walleyes unfortunately the cold fronts this week put a little bit of damper on the bite but uh, i hope you guys at least enjoyed the information in this video we're going to bring you the good the bad and the ugly unfortunately we don't catch fish every time we go out but uh, we'll see you on the next one, and thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to like, comment, and hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button. Head on over, check us out on Instagram, and hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. We'll see you on the water next time.